Stopping or deflecting a massive asteroid hurtling towards Earth will require a monumental feat of technology, and engineers are already designing missions and techniques to mitigate the dangers of hazardous NEOs. These range from a single massive explosive device to fleets of highly specialized spacecraft. But which of these many possible techniques is the most feasible? The mitigation method really depends on what you're mitigating against. And since we haven't discovered anything yet that's on a, an impact trajectory, we don't know what we'll, we would be mitigating against. So it's impossible to choose, you know, which arrow to choose out of the quiver of possibility. I mean, that would have to be decided once something is discovered. You know, I'm an engineer, and so if someone were to ask, someone were to ask me today and tell me that we've got a, a particular size object coming in, uh, there are a couple of things you'd have to, I'd have to think about. One is, what have, we done, what have we actually tested? What do we have confidence in that would work now? We have uh, kinetic impact, where we've actually, actually struck a comet before. We know we can do that. So from the engineering perspective, I'm confident we can make that happen again. Uh, the second one would be, um, for example, a nuclear explosive, which we know we could do. Um, there are circumstances where if it's a small object that we would want to design perhaps a number of kinetic impactors that would actually strike on a, you know, on a frequent basis to actually provide enough impulse to move it away. Um, and that would be, I think, an attractive technique. Um, there are uncertainties associated with these things, but in having done it one time, it gives you a feel that you can do it again. The mitigation technique we use depends entirely on, on how big the object is and how much time we have. But in, in terms of a developed technology, ballistic impact is really the only thing. So for an asteroid in the sub-kilometer range with a decade or two warning, just run into it with a spacecraft and you can change its orbit enough. My group at University of Glasgow did a comparison. And so the two methods we found that were the most efficient uh, were either a nuclear blast, from a scientific point of view, or the one that I'm investigating, which is solar sublimation, which quite easily is taking a huge mirror, okay, and you want to focus the sunlight. Exactly if you were a kid and you took a magnifying glass and tried to, to fry an ant, it's the same idea. We want to focus the light of the sun, which is energy, onto a very small point and burn the material enough that it actually turns directly to gas or simply then just shoots out the back. This creates enough thrust that actually, over a while, moves the course of the asteroid. The probability that something's going to be discovered that collides with the Earth is very small. But if something is discovered, that's when you really start putting together your mitigation plan. And, but it depends on the specifics of the discovery. If it's small, if it's big, what year, how many years do we have, and so forth. One thing to think about on these types of events is that you, many people think you just send up one rocket. You, it has to be more than one rocket. You have to send multiple rockets because if that rocket blows up, you've made a big mistake. So we want to make sure that we get one, or at least one rocket on target. Another potential method of deflecting NEOs is the use of a gravity tractor. This is a spacecraft that would use only the tiny force of its own gravitational pull to slowly drag an asteroid off of its orbit. Far safer and less controversial than a nuclear blast, this could be an ideal method for moving hazardous objects into safer orbits. It's also something we could do right now. EADS Astrium, a European aerospace engineering company, already has a design for a gravity tractor spacecraft that could be built using today's technology. Now that engineers are designing real spacecraft capable of preventing impacts from average sized NEOs, questions of responsibility have arisen. Who's responsible for? and who will pay for missions to stop impacts from space. The responsibility for uh, dealing with an impactor is, uh, is one of the issues that we hope to begin to discuss more now. Uh, I know there's work going on at the United Nations to develop some kind of a protocol for making a decision like that. I think the general uh, view of anybody on the planet would be that uh, a strike anywhere is bad for everyone. No one is responsible for dealing with asteroid hazard. It's only in the last 20 years that we've even realized there is a hazard. And it's been mostly scientists, people like, like uh, NASA, who have studied it, but NASA doesn't have the responsibility for defending us. So there is no system. That's why what's so valuable, what the Association of Space uh, Explorers and Rusty Schweinkart have done, to begin to raise the consciousness through the UN that there might be real important decisions that would have to be made internationally. 
at the moment, uh, there really is no one who's responsible for dealing with NEOs in the sense of if we find one with our address on it, that they're responsible to do something. Not only in the United States, but in fact nowhere in the world is the responsibility to take action to protect the public uh, from the hazards of an impact. If an asteroid with the potential to cause great damage were heading for a third world area where the people there had no uh, capability, I think uh, there would be a certain responsibility. But it has to be responsibility. It has to be a responsible act. You don't want to go out there, say, with a nuclear weapon and blow it up so that all the crumbs then still land in the middle of Africa or something. That's not it may not be helpful. Some entity of government in each country, actually, or at least in the spacefaring nations, uh, has to be assigned the responsibility. Until there's an assignment of responsibility by, in the United States, the Congress and the President, nothing will happen because you don't, you don't get money to do something you're not authorized to do. So authorization uh, or, or an assignment of responsibility is the first step. Once an agency like NASA or anyone else is assigned the responsibility, then they, the first thing they have to do is start thinking about it. I mean, right now, the brightest minds in NASA have been thinking about the discovery process, but not about what you do about it if you find one coming at you. And so the first thing that has to happen is a bunch of bright people have to start thinking creatively about how do you address this, this challenge. Now, can it be done? Absolutely. And a lot of my organization, the B612 Foundation and others, have been thinking about this, but we're not part of the government, and we've been trying to beat on the Congress and the administration and NASA to do the work that, unfortunately, at the moment, is being done outside government. Perhaps the most debated issue in planetary defense is the use of nuclear devices as a prevention technique. They could be used to either vaporize or deflect an incoming NEO, but is the use of such devices justifiable? At the moment, we do not have a complete inventory of all of the objects that are dangerous, but the very largest of those objects, if we found one coming at us today, would require a nuclear device in order to deflect it. In certain cases, we don't have a choice. Uh, if we get above a certain size, we really don't have a choice but to use a, a, a nuclear explosive. And the primary reason is that you can deliver more energy uh, to an object using an explosive device of that type than you can by any other means. I can't think of any reason we would ever need to use a nuclear weapon. If there is a reason, fine. We have more nuclear weapons than we need right now on Earth, and we might get rid of a few. But that, to me, is, is a, a difficult thing to justify because we don't have enough knowledge of what the effect of a nuclear weapon would be. It's something that we will always need to have around, I believe, because there will be objects big enough that are so big we don't have a choice but to use them. It's only the very largest objects that would require nuclear, a nuclear device to deflect them, and those very largest objects are very, very infrequent compared with the smaller objects which can use non-nuclear deflection and are much more likely to occur. So we cannot today rule out the possibility that we would have to use nuclear, but it's extremely improbable. The probability is about 98% that if we realize the threat, it would we could deal with it with a non-nuclear device.